first two sections of maple leaf rag, which I'm going to try to teach you. There are two points to make in this. The first one is I'm going to show you how the, what the left-hand technique always is and what the right-hand technique always is. And when I say always, I mean 99% of the time. And I'm also going to emphasize that it's ragtime is to be played swing. This is how Scott Joplin often used to play. And the original recording of him playing his own piece was swing. It was not straight. So first thing, let me show you the difference. This is straight. All the, all the notes are the same length if you listen. But swing, you're holding the note down a bit. It's very hard to put into words. It's a feel thing, but listen. Now I'll do straight. Swing. Swing again. Straight. So hopefully you can feel that difference. And once you've got the exercises down, you'll be able to practice it and feel it for yourself. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the right hand pattern, which is behind 90 plus percent of the melodies of ragtime, the whole thing. And it goes like this. I'll demonstrate in the key of D, but you can practice it in all the triad positions, all the major triad chord positions. And I also recommend doing it with minors as well, because you will come across minors too. So, um, it goes like this in the key of D. So you start on the third always. You'll, you'll never do this with the left hands. It's only a right hand thing. Three octave. Three, five octave. So get that part down. And then you go three octave again. So add that part. So first part, three octave, three, five octave, and then three octave and then three, five octave again, but then at the end, you just do a little final three octave. So that is what most of this is based on. You don't, sometimes you put a seven on top, but normally it's just done as an octave. So it's kind of like that, three parts. And then bom bom, like that. Let's do it in the key of G, minor. And sometimes you might hear a final little little third at the end. Sometimes so it was just try it with G major. Sometimes you'll hear that little bit at the end, but you don't have to do that. Let's do it with E. So really try and get that down because what's going to happen next in your training, in your journey of ragtime, is that you're going to move that around. So you're going to go something like uh, this is completely spontaneous. So I don't know what's going to come out come out like, but this is what you need to be able to do up and down, so you're going to go, like it's kind of, that kind of thing. So you're going, you will be going three, but you drop down a semitone. So you're going three octave, three five, but if that octave after is a semitone lower, so on even F sharp, it's that kind of thing. And then you go down again. to get that ability into your fingers. Because that's what happens in ragtime. So that's the right hand, get that down and we can go into the tutorial in part two, that's the whole point of this. So this is just part one, just the, the song and the technique. Now the left hand, to basically practice, you want to put your little finger, I call it a pinky bounce, just like that on the major triad. Of course you can do it on the minor triad if you're doing a minor. And you basically want to put them together. So first of all, try with that, let's do it on the D. take time but do it really slowly it, it all fits and if you want to do it swing and that's what you want to aim for straight and swing straight and now swing just a bit more lilt now to take the left hand further instead of just doing this pinky bounce you'll go down a whole octave let's do it on G so it's a bit more in the camera G chord this is the first one, little finger, simple triad. Of course it can be minor, but we'll keep on major. And you'll do the same thing. Or swing. So your right hand is basically on autopilot. When I'm playing, I'm looking at my right hand maybe 5% of the time, just for like, just to get the right starting note occasionally. 
like this kind of I'll just sort of see the starting note like that but my 95% of my of my attention is on this left hand just so I get the bass note right and, you know sort of because you've got these big jumps so that's the so the first one is the finger bounce and then you're doing the octave with the whole chord then you want to play the fifth so you get this kind of this kind of thing but the fifth is below so I'm playing G and D in the bass so you need that so you, all I can say is practice. You just have to, and you, you're allowed to look. You don't have to do this with your eyes closed. Don't make it harder on yourself. So that, and then if you put that together straight. So my eyes are just looking at the note that I'm about to play just before it. So I'm, my hand is following my eye. And then swing. quite fun and then of course you go to the next level which is to play as much of it as possible with octaves octave on the G there up to the chord down to the D as an octave up to the chord Oop. this kind of thing let's do it on D uh, oh, uh, but by the way when you're playing that fifth on the bottom can also play the third above so G would be a B above so that happens a lot and you might go down to the fifth up to the third down to the fifth up to the third and that's how it's all in octaves in the, when I'm doing the, the bouncing I'm playing the third as B as an octave and the D as an octave and even the G as an octave 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 you just move around like that that is the foundation of ragtime and you need to put them together. So uh, I won't go into the tutorial, but if you just watch the left hand, especially on the second part, you'll see, so don't worry about the right hand, but just, you'll see the pattern, but look at the left hand, how I'm playing it. Starts on the fifth there. Octave. Octave on the, octave on the third. It's very hard to do it slowly. So that's kind of the idea. You're playing it as octaves as much as possible. So if you can get all that down, you should be ready, left and right hand, to take on the maple leaf rag. Now, I know there's another part at the end, but I don't think anyone's going to get that far. And even if you do, you'll probably have the ability and the ear to be able to play it yourself and work it out yourself uh, without necessarily reading the sheet music uh, list by listening to the original. So hopefully this video has been of use to you and you will be ready in a few days or a week to take on part two, which will be the actual tutorial of the, of the piece, of those two sections. So there you go. As always, likes, comments, subscriptions are always welcome. Have a look at my video, Magic Mike's Like Waterpeed, instead of us, perhaps, Patreon, and all my playlists, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.